Okay. Hello, everybody. I'm Helen, and um, I teach at the Dorothy Benson Senior Services Center. And today we're doing um, week two, part two of our printing on fabric with uh, simple stencils. So the whole um, idea of doing this is we're going to be using um, just basic, basic tools. So just to recap, um, I recommend you make simple stencils out of, and this is important, you need waterproof sandpaper. It doesn't matter what grit it is. Uh, mine, mine, I think is 180, but you want the waterproof one, okay? And then um, what you want to do is draw a simple design. And in my case, I made the leaves, okay? So you just draw it with a Sharpie on the back side. And um, I tried cutting the stencil out with one of these, um, I think they're cuticle scissors, and the edges weren't as crisp and clean as I wanted it. So I still think it's best to use an X-Acto knife blade, and I'll show you how easy that is. Um, you do have to be careful that you're not, you know, your fingers are not in, in, on the, in the path of the X-Acto blade. So keep that in mind. So if you notice my stencil, I do have these um, swirly designs, but I have to create a little bridge here, okay? You do, I think you see the bridge right there. Because if I just cut out a swirly design, um, there's nothing to support and it's just too loose and you'll run into lots of problems. So uh, let's see where I've already started cutting. And this does take time, so don't, don't be rushed, okay? So once you put the blade down, I try not to pick it up again, okay? And then you just wanna press hard, keep your fingers out of the path of the, um, the blade, all right? And you, you're gonna need a cutting mat of some sort. You could use a magazine or something, the back of, you know, but, um, I think the cutting mats are better. If you have a sewing cutting mat and you don't want to do this on the grid side, just flip it over your sewing mat and, um, oops, I just went. Now, if you accidentally slice something, you can ta put tape over that place, okay? And to seal it, okay. I think this um, sandpaper dulls the blade of the exacto knife, so, um, you want to make the simplest, simplest, okay? So do you see my little bridges here, okay? Um, when I stencil this, these bridges are going to show up. If I wanted to, I could, you know, once I stencil the fabric, I could lift this up and touch up and paint in uh, where those bridges are, okay? But you have to kind of practice on the sample sheet. So those are the simple, simple uh, stencils. Um, and, and the whole point of this um, four weeks is to try to use the simplest method. So here are my other stencils. Okay, very simple ones. Okay, here's, uh, I don't know if you can see that. And here's another one. Okay. All right, let me put this aside. Well, Uh, yeah, be careful with exacto knife. Don't leave it laying around. Always put it back as soon as you can. All right. So I'm going to move the. I'm going to move this mat here out of the way. Uh, you need. You do need a large surface to do your um. Your work actually. Okay. So last week I did, I stenciled the wisteria, okay, on this uh, heavy linen fabric. I think this is home deck fabric, right? And I did press it. But if you notice, I used the marker pens to draw in stems and some details on the leaves, some lines on the leaves, okay? So that, um, kind of helps bring everything together. If I wanted to, I can continue and um, actually do a little bit of embroidery or put some stitches on here and then make it really pop, 
All right. So this was the test piece. And last week, um, we tried it on this slubby fabric. And it doesn't work that great on the slubby fabric because where there are slubs, it, it just the, the paint just kind of collected there, All right? So um, it, it wasn't as interesting or as successful, All right? So we'll put those aside. Then today I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna actually do a garment. So these, this is a pair of pants and this is the bottom leg, bottom of the leg of one of my, one leg, I guess. Um, I already put ironed on freezer paper. But don't forget, you, all you have to do is go to the grocery store and get freezer paper and it comes in a row. And um, you want to iron, heat glue the shiny side which is plastic actually so the plastic melts on the fabric and um, sticks to the fabric and the whole point of that is to stabilize your fabric so when you paint it um, the fabric doesn't wiggle around on you so I know you can't see it but I actually have freezer paper fused onto here some fabrics it's going to fuse easily some it's not so I've got two ginkgo leaf stencils and I have to make sure I put it where the fabric is. Okay, so let's go ahead and try this. Um, this should work. We tested the ginkgo leaves already, so it should work. Now, this fabric is green. If I try to do a yellow or green, I have a feeling it's not gonna show up. Um, these uh, jacquard, textile paints, they're kind of, uh, they're on the thin, you know, we want to apply it thinly because we don't want a stiff hand there. But um, so when you apply it thinly, it's going to be kind of translucent. And I don't think the green on green is going to show up that well. So I'm going to use navy. And I might lighten it a little bit. So I'll use the navy color. Um, yeah, I'll do that. Okay, let's see if I can get it out of here. You don't want to contaminate the actual jar of um, paint. And this, and I am going to add a lot of, so I'm gonna have navy ginkgo leaves, but I'm gonna lighten it up with this, um, remember this extender? So this is in place of water. Uh, you don't really want to use water because you're going to lose a lot of the adhesion that the paint has in it and the pigments won't stick as well and you need lots of paper towels here okay so i've got let's see if i get this off i didn't have popsicle sticks to so I'm just using spoons here. All right. And don't forget, you need to wear an apron or something because this is going to get messy here. And let's see, I'm going to use uh, control. So let's see which brush is going to give me the this one. This one is probably going to give, it, give me the softest control. Um, I'm going to thin out. Oh, there may have been paint on here already. I'm gonna use a, a thinned out, watered down version first, okay? So you want to wa uh, br uh, remove any excess on the brush, okay? So here I go. And remember, we wanna go inwards because we don't want the paint to scoot under. I'm going to start a little bit, and I have a feeling this is not really going to be a navy color. And the reason why is because the fabric is this chartreuse green. And so I think it's going to have a kind of a, um, brownish tone to it. Okay. So I don't have enough paint on here. 
where I, I thinned it out too much or something. But we can always, you know, go back and add another layer. So I won't worry. Okay. The sandpaper kind of grips the fabric. Okay. That's why I use that. I need three hands to do this. And you can try taping the stencil down so you know it's it's not going to lose its position, but um, you still have to hold it down with, with your hand. Yeah, it's going to be more of a brownish, bronzy color, um, especially because I really thinned out the navy. Let me add a little bit darker one a bit. Okay, so this um, fabric I'm, uh, I'm printing on is linen, and linen absorbs an enormous amount of water. So what's going on here is um, the linen fabric is starting to buckle on me because it's expanding. It's sucking up so much of the moisture. So I'm going to have to work a little bit faster because, okay, I, I think that's enough. Okay, so a few imperfections, but that's kind of cool. Okay, do you see that? All right. So now this stencil is kind of has wet paint on it and there might be some underneath. So I'm gonna set it aside and let that dry first. And I happen to have the second stencil, so I'll just use this. And I think I am going to stick with the same color. And for some reason, I have blue paint right there. I don't know where that came from. Maybe it was on the stencil or something. Okay, now I have to be careful. I don't want to put it on top of here because that's still wet. Okay. So mix up some more paint, wipe off the excess. Oops. Okay, I wonder if something's wrong with this brush. It's not acting right. I'm gonna remember to keep your brush in the water, but you're gonna have to be careful and um, wipe off the excess water because and notice I'm going to, I'm, I'm kind of like mimicking where the, how the veins are on the ginkgo leaf. Okay. So, um, helps with the design. And I'm going to define some of the edges a little bit better. And sometimes you can sneak a peek. Oh, I like that. So I'm gonna keep it like that. So I've got like these really fine veins that you really can't see it on the camera, but um, it's nice. And that is either cat hair, yeah. Oh, that's a brush hair, okay. So I won't worry about that. Okay, so I've got two of these here. Now I've got paper here and um, I am going to add a little bit of yellow to the paint. So we'll let this one dry and we will double check to make sure this one is this, the first original stencil is not, does not have any wet paint. So I'm just gonna smash. So there's no, you know, kind of blot it to see, make sure there's no paint on there. Okay, so I'll set, I'll, get, I'll grab the first first uh, stencil and then, okay, it kind of dries fast because I'm putting it on so thinly. Now I'm going to add a little bit of yellow to this. I think it's gonna give me a bronzy color, let's see. Oh, that's a lot of yellow, okay.
it's oh wait this is navy so it should give me yeah it's kind of a brownish color not not so green let's see yeah um and that's fine because i'm going to add it to this green fabric so we'll 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 see what happens add a little bit more okay so this time I didn't dilute this um, this um, paint, and I've got this brush is losing hair. Yeah, maybe um, don't get cheap stencil brushes that are just get frustrating. So let's see. I'll put this one this way. Make sure this is not wet. And no, I'll put it this way. I'll just put it right here. Okay, let's see what happens. It's kind of a brownish color with a little hint of navy. So it's a little subtle. Okay, I'm gonna sneak a peek. Oh, I like that. Okay. Um, I either have a lot of cat hair or I'm losing the brush hairs. They're getting in the way. Okay, so I like that color a lot. Um, I need to put some more here. So let's see if the first stencil is is dry or not. And once again, I'm going to blot it, make sure there's no wet paint on there. And because we're putting just so very little, this, this first one that has a lot of paint on it, um, but I like these better, prettier. And let's see what does this one oh, um, Three is better than four. And I also have a seam on the back, on the back side, the pant seam. So it's gonna create a ridge design if I put another design here. Um, I may just keep it three, yeah. I can always add some more later on. So I'm gonna keep this three because if I wanna add more later on, I need to move the fabric. Um, I know what I can do. I can put a book underneath so I don't pick up that ridge mark. Okay, so I've got this book and I'm going to put it underneath um, the freezer paper so it doesn't pick up the ridge mark. Okay. All right, so I'll put one here and hopefully my brush hasn't dried out. And this one's gonna probably overlap the this uh, other leaf. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna let it overlap. So I'm gonna add a little bit more yellow here. Uh oh, the navy was so strong it got kind of dark. I think I'm gonna need more yellow. Your your paint on the paper towels dry is going to dry very quickly because um, it's exposed to air and the paper towel is absorbing it. So I think, but you need that paper towel and you don't want to have a damp paper towel because it thins out the paint. Okay, that's just how it is. Okay, I kind of like that. All right. I'm not going to pick up the the um, seam mark on the pants. Okay. And I am actually going to apply it heavily where it overlaps. Oops. 
I put too much there. Oops, got it smeared there. Okay, got a little blob right here. Um, I had too much paint on the brush. Okay, let me see if I can, while it's still wet, maybe kind of move it a little bit. Okay, well, it's already dry. All right, so um, I would like to put one more because four is not a good number in Japan. So I'm gonna put the fifth one. And the fifth one, I think I might make it this navy color. Okay, move the slide the book. It's gonna be here. Okay, I'm going to add a little bit of extender here. Oops. I need a little. Maybe I don't need, maybe. Okay, it's not gonna be a navy color. It's gonna be more like a brown, a dark brown. Well, I, I really need something lighter, don't I? No, this will be fine. Okay. So I'm not gonna overlap this one. Okay. Is that the right stencil? Okay, this is a stencil I don't like. Okay, is it? No. Let's see, I can't tell what's what anymore. Okay, so I'm gonna use this stencil. Um, I really need to make another ginkgo-y stencil. So start out light. Real careful and patient. This isn't exactly navy. I'm kind of doing that like a pouncing move here. Okay, all right. All right, so I've got five of these. I'm gonna put this in the water so it doesn't dry out, all right? Um, you want to leave the, um, for some reason I've got a lot of cat hair and brush. Oh, these are brush fibers. Okay, cheap brush, not good. Um, so I'm gonna leave the, Freezer paper on here until I'm sure it's completely dry. I'll move the book out. So these are, this is the pant uh, that's on the side. And it's going to, I don't think you can see that very well. So this is the pant. And this is a side, and there's a tie right here. So it's gonna be like this right on the side. It's, it's gonna be kind of cute. All right, I need to move this out of the way. Let it dry, okay. And then, um, I've got the Wisteria one, but let me show you, um, so we were, I was making stencils, right? I was using the sandpaper and the wisteria one, I happened to have made it out of like stencil plastic. I think that's what this is, okay? But you can make it out of sandpaper. I, and I think I made it out of this because I wanted a larger image and um, I didn't have enough 
the, the what is it? The sandpaper wasn't big enough yet. So last time I also showed you, you can buy, you can buy um, store-bought stencils and I have one here of a turtle, okay? And then this one, I don't know if this one will work. It's just gibberish print. That might be cool. And then there's some really delicate ones like this. So you might need to use a smaller stencil brush. Also on these, you can do different colors, okay? So you can just blend it and make it move to a different color. So we can try some of these and see if it works. I'm gonna try the um, turtle first. This is this one is actually a cricket. Yeah, this is a cricket. You can't tell what it, right now. Okay, so we'll try the turtle one. And I think there's a front and back, but I'm not quite sure. It doesn't look like you need to have a front or back on this one. So, yeah, I don't know. It feels like there's a front or back. Um, there's print, so I guess this is the right side. It's just basically plastic that they cut with a laser or whatever cutter they use. Okay, so I'll put the turtle here. Um, I think turtles are green. Sea turtles are green. So remove and I use a paper plate or a disposable plate. You can use a regular plate, just wash it real clean. I just didn't have anything. All right, this time I'm going to use, and this is just plain muslin. That's all that this fabric is. I'm going to use a combination of yellow and green. And, you know, instead of navy, I should have bought blue. Um, the reason, because the navy is a little bit dark, blue may have been a better choice, then I can mix, have all the primary colors and mix different colors. Violet might be the only one, violet or purple might be the only one that you might want to buy. I'm going to add a little bit of navy. No, I'll just, I'll do violet because I'll get a brownish color. Okay. I'm just going to mix up these colors. I encourage you to mix up colors because um, using colors straight it's just not as exciting. You don't get as much depth. So if you mix colors up, it's you know it makes it more interesting. Okay, my paper towel has expired. Okay, be real careful. You need a lot of space where you're working because if I sit this down, it's going to mark the fabric. I have a. Um, a cheap tray here that I put everything on so nothing migrates to the working area. Keep it all contained, all right? Okay, so I had, let's see, this is the brush that shred a lot. Okay, I'll try this brush this time. No, I don't have an extender on here. Maybe I'll try this without the extender this time. All right, um, the head of the turtle, let's make him greenish, okay? and really wipe off a lot of the paint if you can, uh, because if you have globs of it, it's gonna seep underneath. Okay, let's see if this one's gonna work. Okay, this is a very light green. I'm just, I'm not gonna shove this one too hard. Um, I think I will pounce it though. Um, I'm afraid if I do like this kind of movement or this kind of movement, the, the, the paint will go underneath the plastic. So I'll just do pouncing. And then wipe off the excess. So maybe I'll just give it an overall greenish tint first. Oops, too much on there. Okay. It's kind of hard to do. Um, we're doing basic, basic um, stenciling. So if you really want to get into this, you, you would have to switch over to um, 
using silk screens. And then I would recommend instead of, I think you can still use the textile paints, but I normally use the um, sodium alginate and fiber reactive dyes. Um, but I can probably get away with, I, I don't know how much of this textile paint will clog up the um, silk screens. Okay, so when you're doing this, you don't need to do it evenly. Um, you know, you want to make it interesting. So some places are dark and some places are light. I'm going to add a little bit of yellow here, wipe off the excess. Okay. You get depth, you, depth if you, if you um, don't apply it evenly. Okay. Okay, so the underside or whatever you call that, I assume it's in shade. So I'm just going to make it a little bit darker by adding a little bit of that. Okay, it's not that dark. Navy, okay, more navy. Mix the navy with the blue maybe, I mean with the green. Okay, so give it a little brownish. Okay, I am using circular motion because I was having a hard time with the bouncing. So best to just practice, practice, practice a lot actually. Um, and you know, you can you can um, stencil it, if you don't want to have all this fabric with practice pieces on it. You can stencil kitchen towels. You know, just get yourself some inexpensive cotton kitchen towels maybe, or linen and experiment with that. So I made it slightly darker there, I'm shading it, okay. And then it needs more green. So I will add a little bit of green here and there. Oops, not turning green. Okay, let's see if it'll turn green on me. Sometimes you have to let it dry, the paint dry before you add another layer. Otherwise, um, the paint will mix together. So I'm adding hints of green here. So see how you're kind of, it's kind of shading it a little bit. Okay, hints of green here. I am using a circular motion now because it seems to apply and get on there better, better that way. Okay. Now let's work on his head here. Uh, it needs to be a little bit darker. So I'm, I'm doing it very lightly. I'm not shoving this in because I want to. I have to be careful I don't get too much on here. Shading it. Okay, maybe some more green highlights. This green is This brush is shredding on me again, I think. Okay, and then I forgot what color this is. Okay. So I need to add more green. Okay, the top of his head, I'm gonna lighten him a little bit. Remove the excess dye paint, I mean. Oh, that didn't get light.
Now this is muslin fabric and as I paint, I'm noticing that the weave is not exactly even. So um, it's just inexpensive muslin fabric, but it's, it's good to test on, test things on. Now let's say you just have a lot of these um, samples. You can also stitch them onto like a tote bag that you already have. Um, or maybe on the back of a denim jacket. Oops, I moved. Okay, I'm just gonna quit here, see what it looks like. All right, that looks pretty good. Um, so let's see if I could show this to you. All right. So if you notice, I have different shades and different colors. Now I can go back and just touch up his eye. Um, that's kind of nice, okay? Has a little bit of depth. Um, still could, could have used a lot more green. Um, I'm not quite sure what color these, these uh, sea turtles are, okay? So we did that stencil. Now let's try this, a little bit of this. And I'm gonna see if I can blend the colors for you to show what that looks like. Let's see, I need paper towel here. Move this so it doesn't get on everything. Um, okay. work on this part. We'll try this one. I'll just do a little section of it. And it feels like wherever it's cut, wait, there's a smooth side and a matte side. Uh, I think the, usually the matte side goes on the bottom, but I'll try it. I think it should be this way. I guess it's reversible anyway. No, it has, I can feel like ridges. Well, you just have to experiment and see which side works, okay? Okay, so I've got that. Now this time I'm going to use extender. Okay, remember this takes the place of adding water. All right, and then I'm going to use is true red it says I'm just going to use true red and let's try violet see, see what happens okay I, I yeah it looks like I should get like a, a true blue color instead of that navy so I'll have a little bit more variety of colors I'm not gonna use the brush that I had in there. I'm gonna use this tiny, tiny stencil brush. It's kind of flat though. Um, let me get this out. Okay. And I'm putting the red on one side, the violet on the other. I don't want them touching right now. Okay, so um, let's see. I'm gonna start with the red because it's a lighter color. And let's go. And we're, we're gonna thin this out. And you just kind of have to eyeball it. Wipe off the excess, okay. And then I'm just gonna go very lightly down. This is gonna be very light. I should put some yellow on there too. So you can shade it, you can make it darker at the tips of these things, of this design. Um, let's see if you can see that.
these are really, really tiny little cutouts. So I don't know how much, it looks like I can get it to shove in there really good. Okay, always um, remove the excess paint from your brush on the paper towel because you don't want that blob of paint to slide underneath the stencil, um, especially because I'm using circular movements here. Okay, now I'm gonna keep that um, red on there. See what it looks like if I mix it with the violet. Ooh. Dark. Might not be that pretty, but let's see. And I'll put it on the bottom part of these leaf like designs. I'll show you how it looks like um, when you blend it. So make it a little bit darker on the bottom part and then lighten up towards the pinkish part. Okay, yeah, I'm going to take some and see if I can get the paint in the little dots. I'm not sure. It looks like it's going in there. I may have to pounce it. A stencil like this would be really hard to um, make on your own because it has a bunch of, bunch of tiny little cuts. Okay, so you may wanna buy these kinds. Okay, make it a little bit darker, put another layer. So if you want it dark, you just keep doing layers because if, if you, you, you want a little bit of control and um, you also don't wanna blob a whole bunch of thick paint because it'll seep under. Okay, um, my brush is a little bit dirty, but I'm gonna see if I can do a little bit darker red here. I'm hitting it very lightly here. So this fabric stenciling can get kind of addictive and um, might end up stenciling everything in your wardrobe or your house. Okay, let's see what that looks like. Okay. Oh, that's absolutely beautiful. Yeah, it might be worth buying stencils. Okay, so here it is. And I blended it, okay? So you have the dark, dark violet, and then it becomes light violet, and it goes to um, pink. Let me see if I can get the light better here. Okay, so that's really pretty, yeah. And it picked up all those little dots, right? So this can... Uh, really become addictive and be lots and lots of fun. Yeah. Um, let's see, what else do we have today? I think I like those stencils. Okay, so um, this is like a studio work shirt. It's just rough cotton. I think that's what this is. And um, I put freezer paper right here. 
Um, I don't know how much of the paint this is going to pick up. So let's find a stencil to try. Um, I could try this one since I've already started. Uh, let's see. Make sure there's no wet paint underneath. Okay. I might try this little tiny one right here. I don't know if you can see that. Okay. And I gotta figure out where my and let's see how much of the um how much of the paint, the fabric. I'm gonna use my tiny brush, but I need to rinse it out really good. I don't want any extra water. So I'll move this guy a little bit closer here. And I'll just do violet, how's that? Okay, I, I really don't know if it's gonna pick up all these details because the weave is so loose and um, bumpy, okay? So it might not work, but this is a work shirt, so. Yeah, the weave is like scooting around, moving on me. So I have to be very careful. Um, I may be stuck with the pounce method here. And I'm not gonna do an even coloring. I'm gonna have dark and light areas just to keep it interesting instead of a flat coloring. Shade it. Um, for this kind of weave fabric, you might want to do just a small bit because it's hard to keep it stabilized. So I just like to experiment with different kinds of weaves, fabric weaves, just to see what it does. And this is a work shirt, so. All right, that came out pretty good, I think. Um, fuzzy edges because of the fabric weave is so loose here, but it's kind of cool. Now I'm gonna have to put some more on here because it looks funny with just one. So I'll have to finish this up and add some more. Okay, let's see. Well, I hope there was a uh, freezer paper underneath here. I didn't check. I'm almost sure there is. Okay, this one I'm going to do a little bit. Well, I was going to do a little bit lighter, but maybe. Um, I have a feeling because I throw everything in the wash at a warm or high temperature that I'm going to lose some of this color. So uh, you really need to wash these in like colder temperatures or even delicate at a colder temperature. And then you shouldn't lose any colors. Oh, I like that, that's pretty. Okay, and then I guess I need to put one more and that's probably wet still. Let's try that. I'll see if I can lighten this one up a little bit more. I'll try to do this one as lightly as I can. The reason why is I think I may have put it right over the breast area. So, I mean, I don't want this to be prominent. Keep it subtle. Okay, I think that's enough. 
Okay, that one's real light, see that? Okay, well, I think these uh, store-bought stencils are really nice. Um, let's see, I hope I don't need to add any more. Okay, so that's, that's um, doing it on garments. It's a little bit tricky. Um, put a book underneath or something underneath so that you don't pick up any of the bumpy stuff on, on the other side of the garment. And um, you will have to heat set this after either 48 or 72 hours, depending on what it says on the instructions. And keep your brush wet, okay? And I'm going to probably do the um, other garment off camera, or maybe I'll do it next week, okay? And we'll be back again for session three. So this is what it looks like. It might, it's probably still wet too because it's a fuzzier cotton. Okay, and then see the weave of the fabric? It's really bumpy, all right? And so it's, it's kind of pretty. Okay. All right, so I do like the... Um, I do like the turtle a lot. Okay, I think he came out pretty good. All right. And uh, that one's interesting too. All right. So we will see you next week. Let's see.